Hi everyone, it's Tommy from the WB Trading Team and today's video we're going to basically follow on from our previous video looking at how we could trade on a computer against a phone and a tablet and I'm going to focus in on setting up alerts, so trading alerts here. We're going to use the IG platform and most of you will be familiar with that and I'm going to compare setting up the flexibility of an alert on IG's desktop platform and also what we can do on IG's mobile app. We're going to compare you know, how useful each situation is and where I think you can kind of use a combination. So yeah, with that being said, guys, we'll get started for today. Just very quickly before we dive in, if you're still struggling with your trading or you'd like to know more about how mechanical edges are traded, I've put together a free video course for you that'll map out and explain everything in detail, along with walking you through exactly how the mechanical rules actually work. If you'd like to watch that after this video, I'll pop a link in the description. You can click through and you can watch that straight away. So we're going to start by looking through the IG desktop app, the standard platform that you would use if you sign up with IG and access it through their dashboard. Now there are a few different type of alerts that we can use on IG. We can use just a price alert, but we can also go down to indicator alerts as well. Now this is something that's different from the mobile app that you can use. We'll come on to that a little later in the video. But for now, if you're gonna set up a trade alert on the desktop app, you go up here into the top corner to alert section, and you can see that we've got two options. We've got price and indicator. Now on the price section, the first option we have is price change. And this is essentially telling us, do we want to have an alert if the price changes by a certain amount? So it's default to a percentage, you know, 1% here. You can also select a number of points. So, you know, if you wanted to see if it's gone up 20, 30, or gone down a number of points, you can set that up. And for the time period, it's basically telling you over what period do we want to see this change? So do we want to see an alert when the price changes by 1% over a day or in the space of five minutes or an hour for example and the same thing with points as well so if we set this up let's just say we want an alert when the price changed by five percent in one day just as a very random number we set the alert up confirms and it tells us down here on the other side of the screen in the alert section what we've got set up so you can see here that it now says on the us 500 price moves by five percent in one day we can also change it in here if we want. So I'm going to move it to 3% and it'll adjust. Or we can just delete that. Now, when the alert happens, you'll get a notification bottom of the screen. You can set this up to have a noise as well. And it will tell you here when it's been last triggered. If we now have a look at the price level option, this is very similar, but you know, all we're doing here is telling us when the buy price or the sell price reaches a certain level. So let's say we want uh, an alert to go off when you know, the US 500 maybe gets back up to 4,600. Just put that in there and put a, you know, if you wanted to put a message in, that's optional, but the alert is the main thing. We can just set that up, obviously buy or sell price. So eh, we just put it as the buy price here because we're waiting for it to get back up to here. Set that up, obviously take into account there is going to be a small spread, something like the S&P. Not a massive spread on this, so the difference between buy and sell price, we're fairly okay on, it could be either. And once again, you know, if we go down to the alert section here and go now to price level alerts, so the different option, it's going to tell us that we have the alert set here. And as we saw on the price change, we can edit this here, we can delete and we can see when it's last been triggered. So we can do these alerts on any particular market. You know, we're using S&P 500 as an example here, but you could do it on any crypto market, commodities, FX, etc. The alert system is the same. So let's now have a look at the indicators option for alerts. This is where we have a little bit more complexity. So if we click on the indicators alert section, you can see there's a few boxes. So time frame wise, that's going to be important. Obviously, we're on the daily right now. So I'm going to leave this as the daily, imagining we were setting up an alert on this time frame. Price wise, I always recommend just leaving it as the mid unless you have a significant bias of one way or another and we can add a number of indicators in now. I'm gonna keep it simple for the first example. So let's just say we're gonna choose um, an exponential moving average and we're gonna do the five crosses over 
the two the hundred. Now, one thing actually is good to do, particularly with the moving averages, often what we'll want is crossovers in each direction. So it's important in this box here, we select crosses. So we're not just looking at when the five moves above the 100, we're looking at when the five crosses over the 100, or crosses under actually, I should say. So that means we're gonna see it in both directions. Now, as you can see here, we've gone to the box to change a variety of things. So we don't actually have to compare EMA levels. We don't have to compare one exponential moving average with another. We can say when the five EMA crosses a certain price point, most EMA strategies are gonna be based around crosses over two or more levels. So I think it's important we leave it just at the period and just say the 100 level as well. When we press add indicator, we get another couple of options. So as I said, we can add another indicator in, but what we also wanna focus on is the alert me options down here. The first one says immediately. Now this means, do we wanna see right at the moment it crosses or at the end of the candlestick, so when it's confirmed, basically. I tend to just leave that as immediately because I, then I have an alert, I'm a bit prepped, and I can come back and check at the end of the candlestick to make sure that the alert is valid. And also once down here. Now this means, do we want to see it and the alert disappears the first time it happens, or do we want to leave this alert in? Now for something like this, where we're seeing a crossover of an EMA, I think most traders will want to leave this in. If we're using a recurring strategy and seeing when that crossover happens, particularly on lower time frames as well, where you might see quite a few crossovers, you don't want to have to set up an alert every time, basically the first one triggers, and you move on to the next one. So I would always tick every time this occurs. As with the price ones, we just set that up. If I press set alert, get a confirmation, and we can go across to here in the alert section. And as we saw, we go to the final option here. Now I've already got a few set up, as you can see. So we can check these, we can see what we've set up here, and we can delete. And if I had the EMAs on, you know, we'd have an idea of how close they are. But it's important to remember, you know, we set them up and have, well, a potential message if we need one, and also them set up as every time this occurs. So this will give you an alert for when that five crosses over that 100. And with different markets, we don't actually have to be on the screen of that market to get the alert. So as you saw there, we had a few other markets set up as an alert. One of them was the US 100. If I'm looking at the S&P 500 here, and there's an alert goes off on another market, IG will still tell me about it on this screen. So we don't have to be live, and we don't have to have the chart open on a window to get that alert through. Let's say then we wanna combine a couple of indicators or maybe an indicator and the market price. So you know, maybe we wanna remove that, we'll start again and say, instead we'll go for um, consecutive candles. You know, If we get a run of you know five bullish candles, for example, so five up candles there as we've seen most recently here this would have triggered we can add the indicator and also let's say we want to see um, the price needs to be above a certain level so we can add another indicator go through this section actually choose the market price option here so market price is over let's say 4300 uh, obviously the other option will be under our crosses so want it over 4,300, add the indicator, and we've got a combination of two situations here that we can check. So we can really be specific in terms of what we're looking for in this indicator section. Now, there isn't every indicator available to set up an alert, as you can see, there's only really the main ones. So yeah, okay, it's, it's not perfect in terms of what we'd be looking for. You know, if you're looking to say, see when ATR is a certain level, we're not going to be able to see that exactly in terms of an alert, but it does offer you a lot of options on IG to really mix and match and come up with something really specific if you need that as part of your strategy. And once again, all we do, if I just get rid of that Bollinger Band one, set alert, and once more it would come up over here in the alert section and tell you which ones you've selected here. So that's the basis of forming alerts on the IG's desktop app. Let's now have a look at how we can set up alerts on the mobile app. It's a little bit more limited, and you know, if you watch one of the early YouTube videos we've done about trading on a desktop versus trading on a phone, you know, you'll see the advantages certainly of trading through a PC. But 
there are still some limited functions we can use on the IG app. So within the IG mobile app, the options are a little bit more limited, but we can still set some basic alerts and we can view our alerts. For starters, if we go to the alert tab down here, you're gonna see that the alert we previously entered on the desktop app appears here, but it's only the price alert. Now this is because on the IG app, you can only set it up to understand and view price alerts, no indicator alerts or price change alerts. So, yep, it's a little bit limited, but for basic stuff, we can still work with that and it's still gonna help against having no alerts at all. Now, if we wanted to actually set up our own alert on the app, so if we wanted to place a new price chain, I'm sorry, a new price level alert, we can't actually do it from this screen. What do we do is we go into markets, select the market we wanna look at. Let's say we'll pick Forex for now and just pick, say, Euro GBP. And you can see the various options we have here. One of them is set alert. So you go into here and very similar to what the desktop app is showing you just with a little bit less detail, we can select notify me when the buy or the sell price reaches a level or is lower or higher. So let's say the buy price reaches, I don't know, 8550 as an example. And sorry, we can select lower, press alert and successful. We go back to here, go back again to the main menu, go down to alerts here and you can see that we have it in here. So when buy price is greater than 8550, it's gonna tell us on the app as well. And this will go back onto your desktop as well. So if your accounts are linked, then anything you set up on here will show up on the desktop and any price level alerts you set up on the desktop will also be viewable here as well. And if you've got notifications enabled, this will come up on the phone even when you don't have the app open. So as I said, it's a little bit more limited, you know, following on from the previous video we did about trading on a phone against a desktop. You really wanna be trading on the desktop primarily, but you can use the phone just to help, you know, boost that trading, check some of those alerts if you're unable to be at the screen all the time. So I'm hoping overall that's helped guys. I'm hoping it's, you know, given you a little bit of an insight into how to set up alerts on the desktop with a little bit more flexibility. And if you can't, or you wanna check your alerts while you're on the go, also using the IG app, which I do find in some cases really useful. As always, any questions, any comments, drop them below. Let us know what you would like to see on future videos. And yeah, look forward to speaking to you all in the future.